Hello. Today, I wanted to look at how we can use stills from an existing piece of aerial footage to create a 3D model, which we can use to pre-visualize a shoot inside After Effects using the Element 3D plugin. There are now quite a lot of software packages which allow you to use your drone as an aerial 3D scanner. Check out Pixel 4D and their Christ the Redeemer project. However, without geolocated images, we need something a little simpler and 123D Catch is perfect for the job. Using clips from Vertec Imaging's Jurassic Coast Shoot, I've selected a few angles which capture this amazing naturally formed limestone arch. I'm going to open these in After Effects and speed them up so that I have just enough images to allow the software to work its magic. 4-6% to 6 should do. I'll export this timeline as an image sequence and create a project in 1-2 3D catch. Then import the resulting OBJ back into AE using Element 3D and create the pre-visualization. So if I get a chance to fly at this location, I have a good idea of the types of shots I want to try and achieve. Now there is no way on earth that a pilot of my level could ever achieve these types of moves, but perhaps someone out there can. And this process is also very useful if you want to give someone an idea of the type of camera moves that they could expect. So you can wait until that light is just right, everybody's on board with a good plan, and then go out and shoot what you've agreed. Now you don't have to use After Effects for this process, and OBJ will work in any 3D software, but it's always nice to be able to use what you're most familiar with. So let's take a closer look at the process. Although 123D Catch is free, it's only available on a PC and mobile, so I'm going to have to run a trial of Parallels Desktop on my Mac to use it. Forgive me Steve Jobs, I hope you're resting peacefully in the iCloud. Once installed, I'll select the Create a New Capture option and select my image sequence. And select Create Project. This process takes a little while, so don't use too many images as it's a cloud-based process and files are uploaded and then returned from the Autodesk's processing servers. Now let's jump ahead to our received model. As you can see, it's done amazingly well. We can see our camera capture points, but sadly, as this footage was never intended to create a 3D scan, it has been unable to connect some of the other shots and needs some guidance. So I'm going to double click on one of these thumbnails and follow the instructions to match up the shots by finding a minimum of four common points. This process is discussed in more detail on 123D Catch's YouTube channel. Now that we've done those, let's jump ahead to the return model. Uh, that's looking much better. Now we can remove anything we don't want from the mesh using the selection lassos up here, but I'm happy to leave it as is. What is going to help is setting the origin and orientation of the model so that it will work well with other 3D packages. You can do animations inside 123D Catch, but an external 3D application will give you much more control. So first off, we need to set the y-axis as the vertical axis. Z is the default. Uh, then we'll select Define World Coordinate System and line this all up. Again, more detail is available on the 123D Catch YouTube channel. And finally, we can export this model as an OBJ you could export it as other formats for cleaning up or 3D printing, etc. You can also publish it to the 123D Catch Gallery and view the model with their free mobile app. It's really quite something. Now, back in After Effects, 
we'll create a new composition at 1080p create a new solid and apply the element 3d plugin and go to the scene setup import our obj apply the materials and set the anchor point to be from the model and then when we return to our comp now we'll have our nicely rendered model let's just increase the brightness and when we create a camera now we can move around the object And what I've done is I've actually tracked the camera of one of the shots so I know the correct settings for the virtual camera and I can just paste that into the focal length here and so we get the same uh, field of view. We can now move anywhere around this object and put some keyframes in for our camera moves. I'm just also going to add a grid to simulate a ground plane so that'll just help us to get a better feel of the overall movement. So let's start from here and add in a keyframe. And then we'll move in and tilt down, keyframe that. And by looking at the top or left view, we can clearly see the exact path that the camera has taken over the model. And one final tip to create orbiting shots like I did in the example, if we split the camera layer here and keyframe the orbit it will follow the shortest distance between the keyframes so we need to add a null object at the origin which will parent the camera to which is going to control that orbiting movement Now if we keyframe in the rotation, we'll get the desired effect. So that's about it for this technique, but it really doesn't end with pre-visualizations. The 3D data, as I've already mentioned, has so many other useful applications, and especially in terms of compositing 3D effects into your aerial footage. So stay tuned and we'll be back next time with some exciting developments in this field.